Not since the Spanish flu 100 years ago has a pandemic caused such devastation in the world. But this time around, there's a fundamental difference. Data. We'll be putting up charts behind me. So the first slide uh, shows the number of people coming forward and testing positive for COVID. Next slide, please. It's been used to better understand, track and prevent the spread of COVID-19. The global pandemic coverage has propelled data into the mainstream. At The Economist, the analysis and presentation of these data has defined our coverage. It's also informed and influenced policymakers. And this chart went viral. Suddenly it was absolutely everywhere. Even a week later, you would start to see that in government briefings. In a conversation with Economist subscribers, our data journalists provided an inside story into some of their standout work. Are there any particular um, examples you would point to that you that you like or that you're particularly proud of? Yeah, there's, there's a piece uh, that James French and one of our data journalists wrote um, almost exactly a year ago where this was before I think any country really had locked down um, and we we wanted to find out how different cities, different countries were reacting to to the virus. So he, he looked at uh, Google Maps and he noticed in the bottom left hand corner, there's a little, um, I think it's called a sort of busyness indicator. It tells you how many people are in a certain place at a certain time. And he, he had a, a, an amazing idea. He thought if he could scrape that for lots of key places in lots of cities, he could get a, a, a real time idea of how many people were actually out and about in, in Rome, which was, you know, one of the uh, Italy was one of the countries hit early on um, in London, in New York, in Paris. So he set up a, a script uh, that would scrape um, that little bar chart in the corner um, several times a day for, um, I think, 18 or 20 locations in 13 cities around the world for a week. Um, and at the end of it, he had 150,000 uh, JSON files. If you work with them, you know that they can take a bit of um, parsing. But he was able to turn that into a really interesting and informative piece on which cities were locking down and which were still going about their business. So, you know, this showed in a sort of almost a critical week um, in March 2020 that Rome was really starting to sort of lock down. Um, New York hadn't really changed. London hadn't even really started to to lock down. When your team finds data like that and builds a chart, does it um, influence your other journalism? I can imagine that stories sometimes, written stories also sometimes emerge from the data department rather than the other way around. It, with, with that example, is that what happens? Um, I think with that one, James thought there would be something there and he um, he, he scraped the data, analysed it and he was, he was right. But he also, um, I think when people saw that, they thought, well, actually, this is a really interesting data set. Um, and I think soon after, Google made that data available to everyone. And, now, and you know, even a week later, you would start to see that in government briefings, uh, this kind of mobility, um, Google mobility as a measure of countries' uh, response to coronavirus. So it, it really took off from there. How much do your, do your team indeed scrape those kind of openly available sources versus versus other types of um of, of, of data quite a lot really it's um because the anything you scrape hasn't generally been scraped before it's not available so nobody really knows what stories are in that data set so you have to do it yourself really james showed me his um his code for scraping it it was 40 lines long it was a tiny bit of code yet it provided such a rich and interesting data set that it's not, um, it's not a massive ordeal to do, to do this. Now, all of us obviously work above all else to please our subscribers and feed them interesting pieces of information, but occasionally the reach goes beyond that. This is the flatten the curve um, diagram or chart actually, um, which I'm not just making this up, which has had a real impact beyond just entertaining people. Can you tell us what we're looking at and yeah, how, how and why you, d you designed this chart? Um, yeah, so 
uh, back in March, which feels like eons ago, um, our healthcare correspondent suggested that we uh, make our own version of this CDC chart, which you can see on the far left here. Um, I thought it was a really brilliant and simple illustration of an important concept, namely um, what the intended impact of social distancing measures is. So firstly, to delay the epidemic and secondly, to reduce the height of the epidemic peak. Um, so the middle one here is the one that I designed from this chart on the left. Um, as you can see, I kept quite close to the original design just because for the sake of accuracy. Um, my main changes were just getting rid of the y-axis because because it's a diagram, I decided I didn't actually really need it. Um, and I also labelled the curves directly to remove an extra step of interpretation. And then around a week after this, um, an academic called Drew Harris um, made his own version of the diagram. Uh, and crucially, he added a line for healthcare system capacity. Um, so this is a small addition, but really, really important. Um, and it really caught everyone's imagination. This chart went viral. Suddenly it was absolutely everywhere from TV uh, uh, news to, um, I think the UK government had it in one of their briefings. So yeah, that was really, really great. Um, I think it really opened people's uh, minds to uh, data visualization as a tool for communication, um, particularly during a pandemic. Um, suddenly I saw loads of news articles sort of leading with data viz in a way that maybe they hadn't before. I'm Sasha Nauta, Public Policy Editor at The Economist. Thanks for watching. Please visit the link to the left to see a schedule of our upcoming events. Subscribers can also see previous sessions there. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.